Hello everyone, welcome back to Simplest Reimagined. Today I'm going to show you my 2019 school binder. It actually holds all of the subjects I'm taking this year, so let's get started. First, we're going to start off with the cover, and this cover actually has a clear slip, and then I usually put my schedule, and all of the classes are highlighted in color coordinating subjects. On the side of the binder, you can put a slip of paper right in that clear area to put your name and your grade. On the side of the binder, I do have these plastic folder inserts where I organize the periods or classes that I have in the day. A quick organizing tip for your binder is that you should organize by periods. So your first period should be the closest folder to you and then your last period should be the farthest away. Another method to organizing the folders, you can organize by the amount of paper you have per subject. So biology has a lot of paperwork, so I would preferably put that in the back of your binder. Therefore, the weight distribution will be heaviest to lightest going from the floor to your face. So let's get this flipped open. Um, the first thing we see is this clear pocket. This is for quick, easy access papers. The second pocket on the right, which is green, is the homework pocket. And I use this so I don't have to rummage through my locker or through my backpack to find different papers that is due the exact next day. The next section shown is math. Organizing tip number three, buy inserts that directly correlate to the subject that you are learning. So in this case, I have an Algebra 1 flipper. It is double-sided. I actually got this at a garage sale, so I don't necessarily know where you could find it online. But if you do know, please leave it in the comment section below for the rest of the watchers. This insert serves as a great tool for referencing, so I don't have to look back at my old notes to find the quadratic equation when I can easily find it in one of these double-sided parts. Organizing tip number four, make sure that your plastic inserts are double-sided, therefore you can actually maximize the capacity of your binder. The second segment here is my business and personal law unit, and I also have an insert by Quick Study, and it's on criminal law, and it's very helpful. It gives you an overall summary of what the subject is going to contain, and some other fun facts. This is what the guide looks like when it's opened, so it does open like a brochure style. The next section is English, but I like to abbreviate it as LA for language arts. And yet again, we do have a quick study insert featured here on essays and term papers. I also have one on APA and MLA guidelines. The next section we have here is biology, and over here we have some temporary plastic inserts, and these are mainly used for chapter reviews that I made personally. Our following section is Spanish, so here is another insert on Spanish vocabulary. Last but not least, our final section is labeled miscellaneous and I carry lined paper and then blank paper usually on that. And then this folder I don't necessarily use a lot because it is difficult to reach. Organizing tip number five, if you do have the double-sided plastic inserts, use the second part or the back part of the insert as quick access materials. So if you have vocabulary for Spanish, I can easily pull it out and I don't have to rummage through the papers on the main folder area. Organizing tip number six, buy a binder where you can only push one button down and it opens all three of the rings of the binder. This type of binder is a little safer since if you let go of it, it won't hurt as much as with a regular binder. The only downside to this type of binder is that not all of the rings close all the way. So this one is fully closed, but sometimes this does not close fully. So you might have to click it back in. Organizing tip number seven, make sure that you organize your papers by date so the newer ones are closer to the front and the older ones are towards the back. Additionally, the top of this cover, especially this plastic area, is very susceptible to tearing. I already have a slit down the middle and I have no idea how that got there. Lastly, the back of this binder does not have a plastic covering so you can't put any papers there. Also, this top plastic part bends really easily. It's not that noticeable at first, but by the end of the year, it will have gradually bowed a little bit. So you wanna make sure to not put heavy items on top of it. That's it for the video, but if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful day.